unobtrusive plot. Hey, how you doing, man? You still pushing those scripts? Oh, that's cool, man. Hey, I'll talk to you later, all right? He poos gently into darkness. No, Josh, baby. Your script is pure gold, Jewish tea, paper oil, but this meeting is not about schmoozing. We want to hear about all the new ideas you have in store for us. Well, uh, sir, I'm full of ideas. Hi. Um, we have a girl. A pretty girl. Oh, yeah, you beautiful. I like it already. She's, uh, she's a southern belle. Hillbillies. Hillbillies? A gang of ruthless hillbillies. Wait, let's make it a fantasy slash horror film. We have a marketing plan a fantasy horror film. With the gang of hillbillies? Make them a gang of forest thieves. Ruthless forest thieves. That's pretty scary, right? I'm gonna steal your gold? So, we have a pretty girl in the happy forest who is terrorized by a gang of thieves. Yeah. You know, I don't want to write this, sir. I, uh, I was thinking about a dark intellectual piece with a social commentary about America. Ah, uh, cares about pitches and contracts. Just write me something and I'll read it. Maybe I'll like it, maybe we'll go another way. Maybe you'll see payroll, maybe you won't. Okay. But the only parameters I'm gonna set are more fantasy, revolving around a story about life and love, but most importantly, death. We haven't seen a blockbuster the likes of the fantastical fortune-telling head. So recreate this into an original idea and we can go on making lots and lots of money. Hey, bro. How'd your meeting go? Not good, huh? Don't worry, it'll be great. Recreate this into an original idea, and we can go on making lots and lots of money. In the magical world of monarchies and knights, dragons and dragon slayers, the land of ye old redundance has been struck with a new plight. A plague that leaves the victim without thought. The royal king Garganic has been stricken by fear. Fear for the mind of his beautiful princess. I have been stricken by fear. Fear for the mind of my beautiful princess. The king knows that only one man is valiant enough to cross the great mountainside in search for a cure. And I know that only one man is valiant enough to cross the great mountainside in search for a cure. Come on, you know, your bathing boy in the autumn of 1169, the valiant knight. The valiant knight Justin! Meager messenger, come forth. Travel to the lively forest and fetch me this valiant knight, Justin. Yes, sir. So the meager messenger danced his way down to the... Uh, excuse me, excuse me. Yes. Is it more of a, a prance, would you say? You know what, you're right. He pranced his way down to the valiant knight Justin's as he practiced his sword play. His loyal and deformed manservant Leonard watches on. Oh. Deformed manservant? Done. Dun, 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 what dun, are you dun, doing? Dun, dun, dun. Hey, to ensure our financial stability together, I've decreed myself the Duke of Quality Controls. Really? Really, as the Duke, I decree that Leonard should be the handsome and charismatic older brother. No. Just, all right, make him the younger brother. Come on. Play with it. See how it goes. With the help of his handsome and charismatic younger brother, Leonard. Sir, sir, I come with a message from the royal king Garganic. Well then, meager messenger, what hath the king say? There's an epidemic. The people's thoughts are being stricken from their very minds. The royal king Garganic summons your service. <clears throat> from the court of the royal king Garganic, we summon your service to travel over the treacherous mountains to retain a cure to the plague that has been ravaging the minds <laughs> of his loyal subjects. 
most importantly, the beautiful and available. <clears throat> the princess. Dear brother, this voyage is a voyage of sheer peril and unsurpassed opponents and possibly very sticky pits that you won't see when you're coming up to them. If the messenger is any indication, I mean, he's covered in shit. And I hear there are fairies in the mountains and fairies are scary. I think it is only best for us to tell the king of our reluctance. Hold the phone. Why is Leonard such a puss? Because the once willing manservant has become a fearful shadow of his younger brother. Stop projecting on me. Hey, Josh. Hey. I came to see how the story's going. Well, it was going great till the main character's brother lost my balls. Hey, quiet. What do you suppose Leonard's saying? Dear brother, I know that on that scroll my name shall not be found. But due to my braverosity and natural good looks, I have decided I will help you to quell your majesty's woes. Now, let's get out there and win one for the Dipper. Huh? So Justin's, Leonard, and the meager messenger embarked upon their voyage to the land of ye old redundance. And oh how they danced. Oh how they did dance. By the time the brothers reached the castle, they were startled to find that the princess had been stricken dumb. The, the Republican! <laughs> Wait one second. Just because your story takes place at a time when women's rights were at an all-time low does not mean the only female in your story should be brainless. You came in late. There is a plague that okay, is... Okay, say what you wish, but I can't let you discriminate against me and my female cohorts. What if the king is dumb, huh? You'd be a poke at the powerful. But what this is... No buts, mister. If I read one woman say, duh, no sex for a month. They're startled to find that the king has been stricken dumb. <sighs> Dear Princess, who was responsible for this tragic illness? Valiant Knight, I wish I had the answers for you, but we do not know who has caused these tragic events. No sex. Valiant Knight, it is none other than the messenger. The messenger? The messenger? The messenger? What the hell are you doing here? I'm just going through your mail. Now, why is he the meager messenger? Shouldn't he be the cunning messenger, you know, with a zest for life? I mean, it makes more sense. Oh, and by the way, you're paying way too much for your car insurance, and, and I can find you some much cheaper porn, too. No! This is my story, and I'm the writer! Go! Go, 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 please go! Ah! Oh, 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 oh. Damn! Why the black man gotta be the first one to die? Bring your own pony! <laughs> oh, crikey, right not the face! <sighs> now what? You really are pathetic. What? Damn pathetic. Why don't you write a story that you want to write about? Well, that's easy for you to say. Everybody refers to you as the Valiant Knight. Yet nobody can slay a dragon. Why is it that everybody thinks they can write a good story? I hate to break it to you, but writers write it for an audience. That is, they don't sell out. But you can please yourself and the masses at the same time. You know? You're right. Now. Let's get this story back on the road.
Damn! Now why the black man gotta be the last one to be resurrected? That is some bullshit. Disappoint. But this King Gargonic character, why isn't he in it more? I mean, his lines are so sparse. Well, he's obviously the most powerful and handsome and charismatic. Handsome. I suppose you have qualms with the story too. How about this? Just fade the black. I like credits. Anthony Pico's brilliant actor. Rashalini M. Weird 2. Uh, uh, name, name, Dan Lawler. A star, I tell you. Oh, absolutely. Second AD, ha <laughs> ha. More like smoke machine operator. Ooh, Matt Cooney, absolutely. Do -do -do -do. Jessica Newton. Wait a second, I didn't even read a name that was on there. I combined two. Oh, oh, I want my name three times in a row in the credits. Gregory Railroad Crosby. Gregory Roadrunner Crosby. I love this part. All those people who think they need my thanks. Thank you to you. Get original, bastard. <laughs>